do the URL short in a microservice project. And this one is slightly harder than the previous ones, but we should still be able to figure it out. So what you want to do to get started is just open the repository and click code here and then just copy this URL. Go to glitch and sign in and then just click new project, import from GitHub and just paste it into here and press OK. And it will start importing and building the project for us. Now this URL shortener has this simple API where you put in a URL to be shortened into this form. Then when you click post URL like this, we, you get this number right here. And what you do is to this num with this number, you can put it at your app homepage slash API slash short URL. And then you can just put this number in. And what it should do is redirect you to whatever URL you put in automatically. So it's kind of like a URL shortener with a really long URL. Um, so we just have to wait for this now to finish. And we're going to need to use MongoDB for this as well. So um, if I just refresh this, this should hopefully work. And we have these three tests to fulfill. Um, it's the very simple test, but it, like the first test itself takes a lot of work. We'll, but we'll make it work. Um, I'm just going to rename this to something like FCCU or something where it's like free code camp URL. And I'm just going to put URL microservice just as a description. Now, if you click share here and then live app and then copy the link and paste it into here, this is the home page of our app, which just has the readme page. And you can submit the app in the solution box right here. Now this, um, I had a look at the source code for this, um, project and it's got zero testing whatsoever so if you just submit anything it'll work but we're going to still do it properly so now that we've got our project set up we're ready to get started so now that we have the app set up the next thing to do is connect to the database now i'm not going to cover this now because i've already done a video on it so if you look at the introduction video for the mongo dbm mongoose course i've explained how to set up the database and then if you look at the installing mongoose video that shows us how to connect it. So I basically have the password for the database saved in an environment variable called PW. And what I've done is I've gone to the um, project page, clicked connect and um, connect your application. And I got this URL right here. Um, and then I filled in my username, which is user one. And then I have this password that's added into the string right here from the environment variables. And finally, I filled in my database name, which is DB1. So if we look at collections here, we can see that the database name is DB1. And again, if you look at those videos that I recommended, I go through how to um, set up the database connection. So yeah, that's everything really to connect to the database. So now we're ready to get started with the project. So before we can start storing URL information to our database, we need to actually create a model and a schema for the URL. And again, if you look at the videos for creating schemas and models, this will be explained a bit better. So the first thing we want to do is declare a schema for the properties that URLs need to have. And I'm just going to call this URL schema. And to create a new schema, you just do new and then mongoose.schema like this. And inside this, we want an object for the um, various properties and their types. And for the U each URL, what I'm going to do is store the um, original URL, uh, which is what they submitted, as well as this short link that you put in like this, like this number here. So then what we can do is we can look at, we can pick out that um, short link and then redirect it to the original URL, which is both stored in one document. So we want the original URL first, and the original is going to be a type string. And I'm going to make it required because if we don't have a URL submitted, then there's no point saving it. So I'm going to say required and then set that to true. And um, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to just leave that as original. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another field called short. And this is the short URL. So this like um, slash three part here. And that's just going to be stored as a number for us. So that's our schema setup. So we've said that every URL document needs to have the original, which is just a string with the original URL. And then the short, which is just the number for the short URL. And then once again, we can use the short to get the original back. 
Now I'm going to create a model for this. So I'm just going to call this model URL like this. And this is going to be created by calling the model method on mongoose. So it's mongoose.model like this. And, and the model name we want to give it is URL. And um, I'll put that in capitals. And the uh, schema that we want to use is this URL schema that we just created. So we just created a URL model now. Oops, this should be mongoose. Uh, we just created a URL model now, which states, which will have an original field and a short field. And we've assigned it to this variable URL right here. Uh, I'm just gonna check my notes now. Yep. So that's everything we need to get started with creating URL documents and saving them. So the next thing we need to do is find, figure out a way to get this input that the user puts into here, into this form. And we're going to use body parser for this, so I recommend you look at the body parser video as well. Um, if we take a look at the form, which is in uh, views and index.html, we can see that the form's input name is called URL right here, and the path is slash API slash short URL slash new, and the method is post. So this is the route that we need to set up. So what I'm going to do is in the server, I'm going to say app.post since we're setting up a post route. And by the way, this app right here is um, an express app that they've created for us. So and then the route was slash API slash short URL slash new. So that's what this um, form will post to. So we have that now. And the second thing I want to do is run the um, body parser middleware function and to be honest I don't remember this so you can just look at the um, npm page and get it from there so if we scroll down a little bit um, actually we need to require it first so I'm just gonna do that real quick um, again if you look at the body parser video this is covered in a lot of detail I'm just gonna say let body parser equals require body parser and um, the middleware function if I can find it it's called URL encoded or something there we go so you want to run this function called body parser dot URL encoded and extend it equals false and what this will do is it'll um, create it a field in our request called body and it will put this URL in there. So final thing we want to do is set up our own middleware function that takes in a request and response. And what what um, the original project does is it returns a JSON if you click this. Um, I don't know why that's not. Yeah, we can see that it returns a JSON object. So we know we need to be returning a JSON object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, let response object. So I'm just going to create a JavaScript object here, and I'm going to set this to an empty object. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, response dot and JSON. So this sends a JSON back and then we can give this any JavaScript object we want and I'm just going to give it the response object back. Um, so I'm just going to test that quickly. So if we just post this, we should get an empty JSON object back, which we do. So that's good. Um, so now let's look at um, grabbing this URL. So if we just do console.log and then request.body and save that and I just open up the uh, logs and clear that and if I go back and I try posting this and if we look here we can see that inside the request body body parser has extracted this input right here with the name of URL and it's created a field called URL right here and then put our input in here so we now have access to that input from the form so what we can do is assign this to a variable. So I can say something like let input URL equals and I can say request dot body and this is in the URL field like this. And again if we look at the example project and we just post this we can see that the original URL gets returned in a field of the response object called original underscore URL. So we can do that as well. So what we can do here is say response object 
and this will set the original URL field and we can set this to the input URL that we took in. So if I save that now and I go back to here and then I post this again, we can see that our JSON object has the original URL back. So we successfully managed to capture and return the input URL from the form. So the next thing we'll do is probably actually add shorten that URL. So now we're gonna look at generating a short URL and actually saving it to our database. And this is gonna be the trickiest part of this. And I'm gonna be looking at my notes a lot for this. So you'll have to bear with me. So let's talk, think about the logic of what's gonna happen here. So we have the URL field and a short field. And the first URL will have its ori original part as an input URL and then a short as one or a number. And the next one will have its original filled in and the number short number will be two. Next one will have the original URL and the short number will be three. So we, we want to Im increment this short number each time to make sure that we don't overwrite any of our previous URLs. So firstly, we need to figure out a way to find the maximum short number and then make sure that we set the new URL's short number to one greater than that. So let's do that first. So from the URL model, we want to call the find one method. And if we give this an empty object, what this does is it there's no selection criteria. So it will look through all these documents. And what we want to do is if we call a sort on this, and we want to set the sort, if you look at the method training video, by the way, I think I explain all of these methods. We want to make sure the short number is sorted into descending order. So again, what this does is it's, it sorts them by descending order with, and the one with the highest short URL number will be at the top and it just returns one here. So we have the, we'll basically get back the document that has the highest short URL or the most recent one that we added. Then what we want to do is execute this and we'll give a callback function here with an error and a result. And what I'm going to do here is create a variable to, sh is to store this, um, to store the short URL number that we're going to give to our new URL that we just took in. So I'm just going to call this input short. So input short, once again, it what it does is it's going to be the short field or the, the short URL of this new URL that we've just taken in. And I'm just going to initialize this to one because we want the first one to have a short URL of one. So it'll be the app name slash one and it will redirect to the URL. So once we have this error and result, first time we're running this, uh, we always want to make sure there's no error. The first time we're running this, um, there'll be no entries in the um, URLs collection because it doesn't exist yet. So we can put and and here, and then we can say result is equal to undefined. Sorry, result is not undefined. So what this means is that we've essentially found a document. We've essentially found the document that has the highest short URL or the most recent one that we just created. I think that all of this will become clearer once we start building this. So if by default, it'll be one, but if it's, n if, if, we already added something before and we've now got back an entry where we have the highest short URL. So this short field is the highest one. Um, and this result here is that document um, and it's not undefined. What we can do is set the input short, which is what we're going to be putting as a short URL for the new one that we've just taken in. And we want to put that to result dot short plus one. So what this does is, this is the maximum short value that we have right now. And we want to make sure that the new one has one above that so it doesn't overwrite it. Just going to double check that. Yep. So the next thing to do is, um, so now that we, we set our input short value, so either it's going to be one or it's going to be whatever the maximum was plus one. So now that we've got that ready, so now we can start looking at writing it to the database. So what we want to do is once again, we want to make sure there wasn't an error in this part. So we can put if error and um, we want to call a method on the um, model called find one and update. And I covered this in a previous video, but I'm just going to open the docs page again. 
Um, there we go. And if we just go to find one and update. Ah, I can't even find it. One second. There we go. So it's this one right here. So let's call that method. So what find one update does is we want to make sure that we don't create duplicates. So if it already exists, we just want to update it. So here, what I'm going to do is say um, URL, which is our model dot find one and update. I'm, I'm going to give this a few arguments. So the first argument is an object to select them. And we just want to select the ones if, if there's an entry existing already, we want to say original so the, that the original field is equal to our input URL. So this is when this is if there's one to replace already. Then we want to set the properties to um, set for the new or updated record that we're going to add. And that's going to be original is going to be equal to the original URL. And the short value is going to be the input short that we just set. The third value that we want is the options. Again, I really recommend you look at the find one and update video. So the options that we want to set is one second. Oh, this should be input URL, my bad. So the options we want to set. So um, the first option we want to set is this new and what new does is make sure it returns the updated or newly saved record rather than the old record and we want this to be true because we want to return this new record back to the user or we want to return the short URL from it at least so we want new to be true the second value that we want to set to true is this um, if I can find it um, Yeah, it's this absurd value right here. And what this absurd means is it creates the objects if it doesn't exist. So right now, all it does is it finds it and then overwrites it. But we also want to make sure that it gets created if there isn't already an entry with the original URL. And if I just double check that, yeah, we want absurd to be set to true as well. Like this. So that's that. The final argument is going to be a callback function and the callback function takes in an error and the new saved URL. Now this can be a new URL that we just saved or one that we just overwrote. Um, yeah. And again, we want to make sure that if there isn't an error, so we want to make sure that there's no error first. So if there isn't an error, we have this saved URL right here. And what the saved URL is, it has it the original field with the original URL and the short field with the short URL and we've already put the um, original field in here so we want to make sure we set the short field or I think it's short underscore URL in the example if I just click this and then click post yeah we can see that we have this short underscore URL that returns a number so we want to set that field so we'll say response object and we want to set the short underscore URL to be equal to and then the saved URL is the new record we just created and we want to set that to the short field of that which is also this input short right here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this up here so this only returns a JSON if it's been saved successfully so I'm just going to double check that yeah that seems to be right so let's try it and see what happens so I'm just going to open the log just in case um, so if we go back to this and refresh this and then click post URL, we can see that we have original underscore URL and we've got the original URL back and we've also got our short URL back. And if we look at um, our database and I just go ahead and refresh this, we can see that we've created a new collection here called URLs and we have our first URL stored here and we have the original field and the short field. Now, if I were to go back and put a different URL in this time, um, let's do Google and then post that. We can see that the short URL has automatically been incremented to two. And if we uh, reload this, 
we'll see that the Google record has now been created right here. And let's say if I put um, one that already exists in, so I just put the free code camp one in again, it shouldn't create a duplicate and it should instead just override the short URL. So if we refresh this now, Yeah, we can see that there's still only two entries, so it's not taking up any extra space and it's just overwritten this. So that's essentially what we've done, basically. We managed to um, create a short URL entry and then we've returned that back to the user. I'm gonna go through this again one last time. So what this does is, it f um, firstly, it finds the document in here that has the highest short value and then it sets the short value of our new URL, which is this input short right here, to one above that. If there's nothing existing, it'll set it to one, which is the default value. And if there was no error doing this part, what it does is it finds, it, it tries to find um, an entry that already exists with our original URL, where the input is equal to the original. And then it updates that with um, this new short URL, Otherwise, um, if, it, if it doesn't already exist, this absurd equals true makes sure that, that it gets created. Um, and then this new equals true means that this saved URL is a reference to the newly created document. So whatever we just created will have this back, given back. And then from that, we can set the short underscore URL field of the response object to this dot short here. And then we can return it as a JSON. Um, I know this is really like complex, so if you have questions or anything, just put them in the comments and I'll try my best to explain it. It's not really the best solution, but it's the only one I found that kind of works. So regardless though, um, if we put any URL in now, we have the short URL returned to us in a JSON. So that should be test one completed. So let's look at doing test two now. Um, what it says is that if you put in something that's not a valid URL, it should return an error message. So in the example we have here, if I put some random thing into here and click post, we can see that we get this JSON back with an error field saying invalid URL. So we need to do that. So the first thing we want to do is once we've captured this input URL, we want to make sure that it's a valid URL. And the best way to do this is using a regular expression. Now there's a lot of these um, on the internet, but the best one I found is in this Stack Overflow answer right here. And you just want to copy this uh, let var expression equals part. So just copy out this regular expression. And we just want to use this to create a new regular expression. So I'm just going to say something like let URL regex which is our regular expression equals new regex. And you can look into regular expressions if you're interested in this. Um, I think it was in the free code cam course at one point. And you can just put this um, whole exp expression into here and it will create a new regular expression. Then we, what we can do is we can call a method on the input URL called match. And what match does is it returns true if it's a valid URL according to this, and it returns false if it's not a valid URL. So if we want to check if it's invalid, if you put this exclamation mark here, this will run if it's false. And so that means if, if it doesn't match, what we can do is, is send a JSON out. And inside this, we want to put error and then put invalid URL like this. Um, this should have brackets around it. And then we will also want to put return because return makes sure that none of this code afterwards is executed. So we don't want to write it to the database if it's invalid. To put the regular expression in here. So again, when you call the match method on a string, you have to give a regular expression here. So if I save that now, then I put some random string in. We can see that we get this error message back saying invalid URL. And if I refresh the database, hopefully we can find that, yeah, it hasn't been... Um, added to the database. So that's essentially test two completed. So now we're on to the final test now. And what it says is when I visit the shorted URL, it will redirect me to the original link. So what they mean is like, if I put in the app URL and then slash and then the number, it'll redirect. So slash one slash two, and it should redirect to whatever URL we have stored here for these numbers. So the first thing we want to do is set up a get root because we're putting an address into the address bar. So it has to be a get root. So underneath this um, post root, that's really large actually that we just created, we want to set up a new get root. So we want to say app.get. And again, it's slash API slash short URL 
and then what it's going to have here is a number and this number will just be an input because this number can vary and again we want to set up a middleware with a request and a response and if you look at the um, video that I did on um, URL parameters or something in the basic node and express course you'll see how this works so what we can say is let input equals and then we can say request dot params dot input like this and what this means is that this input field whatever we put in here gets stored in this um, object in the request called params under the field of input and we can just assign it to this input variable here next thing we want to do is find it from this database of URLs that we've saved using this number and we want to um, redirect them to the original URL. So what we can do is on the URL model, which is called URL, I'm just going to double check that one. Um, yeah, URL. Um, we can call the find one method since we're just looking for one. And the properties that we want to search with is we want to make sure the short is equal to the input. So whatever in um, whatever short URL value they inputted. And we can give a callback function here that takes in an error and a result. And we want to make sure that there's no error and that the result is undefined. So we want to say result is not equal to undefined. And if that's the case, what we can do is call a method on the response. And if we look at the express docs again, um, yeah, I'm here a lot actually to try and find stuff. Um, I think there's a method on the response called uh, redirect and what we can do is you can put in a URL and it will redirect the user to that URL. So here what we want to do is say response dot redirect and the URL now that we have our results so our result will just be one of these it'll be stored in the original fields right here so we can say um, result dot original like this and then we can put an else here and we can just return a JSON and we can say something like uh, URL not found or something like that. So if I save that now, um, hopefully this works. If I refresh this and I post it here, we can see that we have this short URL of four. And if I copy this right here and then put the four into here, what it should do hopefully is find it and retrieve it from the database and um, just going to double check that because it's being very slow. Yeah, we can see that it eventually did redirect us to the free code camp page. So yeah, that should be everything. That's all the tests completed. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and style this page a little bit just so it looks a little bit nicer. So what I've just gone ahead and done is I've just applied some CSS and I got rid of a bunch of crap that was on this, like the instructions and stuff. And all I have now is just simply the box and the shorten button. So again, the functionality shouldn't have changed. So I can just put something like HTTPS dot dot slash slash. Um, sorry, that should just be one. And then I can just put something like, um, let's say... Uh, maps.google.com and then if I click short in here we can see that we have this 8 here and then I can just go ahead and paste it into here and it will redirect us to Google Maps as we can see. So again yeah that's the entire project completed so we've essentially created a URL shortener tool that we can um, give URLs to and get a shorter link out of it. And it's, we've also created a database to store um, all our results in. So that should be everything for this test. Again, it worked without doing any work at all, but now we figured out how to do it properly. So you can go ahead and submit this here and then click I've completed and that should pass the challenge. Thanks for watching.